word is down on the inside. He has been our guest and speaker in our Wednesday word service on several occasions, and sure enough, he brought the word. Ah, we got the word. Ah. At this time, at this time, we present to you Dr. David Childs. Hallelujah. Certainly, we want to honor the First Lady Childs to the family. Hallelujah. From Antioch Church in Cincinnati, yes. Ohio. Hallelujah. Yes. We introduce to you on this evening. The man of God, Dr. David Childs, at this time. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much um, to, to my auntie evangelist. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much for carrying on. I was with Elder Richardson, uh, my uncle, at the upper room yesterday for noon. They prayed, my children and I. And uh, we were talking about Word Wednesday. Uh, we were in Hamilton, Ohio. And then I saw. Um, uh, your auntie, I seen uh, Sister Gina, she came out and visited us uh, on Sunday, so we just praise God for what he's doing. Give honor to Pastor Jerome Bostic and Mother Allie Bostic. Um, and for those that have YouTube, um, normally we put these on YouTube um, so that those that want to come, come back and listen to the word again and pray with us and, and follow along, you can do that. So this will be on YouTube. Um, let's turn quickly to Matthew chapter 20 chapter 8 Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 and I love how you incorporate your youth um, I made a mental note of that to uh, really try to be more diligent about incorporating our youth um, at, at, at the church here in Cincinnati Ohio so I praise God for those young people reading that scripture and just for the on, on fire church that's out there in uh, in Florida. God bless you. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. It reads like this. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. A tempest is a, is a storm, but not just any storm. It's a great storm. Um, and his disciples, um, verse 24, Inasmuch that the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And so you had a situation out there in the sea where it's not like the movies where you have lights and you can see and it's dramatic music, but it's completely dark out there in the sea. And the disciples were afraid. Um, grown men were afraid. Was the Bible says the ship was covered by waves, but Jesus was asleep. And that's indicative of the peace. That was down on the inside. The Lord, he's the Lord of the storm. And he had nothing to worry about. Jesus had nothing to worry about. Verse 25. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We perish. So that shows their fear right there. They 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 woke Jesus up and said, We're, we're gonna die. We're gonna perish. This, in other words, the storm was so bad, saints, that they just knew that they were gonna die. This is it. This is it. Lord, come help us. Verse 26 of Matthew 8, he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. This is one of my favorite passages. The Lord could see that they did not have the faith that they needed. They had been with Jesus and saw him do other miracles. They had seen him turn water to wine. Um, they had seen him heal people. But yet their faith was not where it needs to be. And that's sometimes how we are. Um, the Lord can work things out for us. He can work out that financial miracle for us. He can heal our body. He can touch and bless our children. He can bless us with the house. He can, he can save our soul and fill us with the Holy Ghost. But yet many times when we get, go through storms of life, we forget that Jesus is able to calm the storm. And that's what's going on here. The Bible says he rebuked the winds. That means he had authority over the winds, over the physical winds. He had authority over the rain. He had authority over everything. And the Bible says, verse 26, there was great calm. Verse 27, I love this. But the men marveled. That means they were like, what? Wow, wait a minute. The men wondered, wondered and saying, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. So you can imagine just being next to Jesus in that boat 
and watching him wake up out of his sleep and speak to the wind and then calm came over the whole setting. That was amazing in and of itself. So I'm gonna stop at that verse 27. And we're gonna talk about from the theme, navigating life storms. And this is picking up something I preached at my church recently and I wanna build upon it. Navigating life storms, navigating life storms. Um, I thought about when I was um, younger in Ohio, we have tornadoes out here. In, in Florida, you all have hurricanes, which is, is scary. Um, but tornadoes are really, really scary. And uh, also just like hurricanes. And you have crazy people out there, believe it or not, called storm chasers. You might have seen them on, uh, on documentaries, on television. You have storm chasers. And what they do, they hold occupation. They're scientists and also thrill seekers. Their whole occupation is to go around chasing tornadoes and looking for where the next tornado going to be. And they get like a rush out of being in the midst of the tornado. And many of them, of course, die and lose their life. But they be trying to get the best footage and the best scientific measurements of that of those tornadoes. They call it the storm chase, chasers. And um, when we were growing up, we had tornadoes. And my dad was always, I always thought he was so brave because the, the tornadoes would come, we'd lose our electricity. And we had to go in the basement because you didn't want to be around glass and could, because the windows could, could, could break and everything. And it was safer to be in the lowest level of the, of the building and away from windows. So we all, it was really scary for me as a little boy because we would go out down in the basement and we'd be quiet trying to listen to see what the storm would do. And my dad was always so brave, Pastor, uh, Pastor Hezekiah Child, Superintendent Childs, would go out and, and go out and see what the storm looked like and see was it safe for us to return back to regular life. And I remember that growing up. And I thought about that thing um, as I think about this story, uh, our Bible message today on navigating life storms. Another instance where I encountered a storm, um, I had a chance to go to Africa recently and, and preach over there. And on the way there on the plane, we had a storm in Africa is 17 hours. And my, my uncle asked me recently and I, and I said 10, but I had to read look at the research and uh, it took us 17 hours to get over there. And um, the, the, a storm came and um, when the storm comes uh, on a plane, you drop altitude, it can be really, really scary. And I just begin to pray because I know who holds the storms. Praise God. I don't know who else, what, what other people was thinking on the plane, but I know the one who can calm the storms. I know the one that can rebuke the wind. And so when I was up on that plane, I was a little worried, but I'm like, my soul is anchored in the Lord and I have nothing to worry about. Amen. And so we see Jesus in the storm with his disciples. And so just thinking about a little background, my, my, my first point I want to make uh, is thinking about our text, we get a glimpse of Christ and his disciples being caught in the middle of a storm at the sea. Um, that first point, there arose a great tempest in the sea, a great storm in the sea. Um, out of the Sea of Galilee, the, something about the geography there, there are sudden storms, often unannounced and intense. It reminds me of when I went to Alabama one time with my family, Gulf Shores, and we were walking down the street when we were going to a restaurant. It was a perfect sunny day, and all of a sudden, it's torrential downpour. It reminds me, it's like that in Florida as well. And um, you could be, it could be a bright sunny day, it seemed like, and then all of a sudden, it's, it's like all this rain and the downpour. And that's what I thought about with the disciples being out there on, on the sea. And just, they were caught in that, and it must have been really scary. And uh, secondly, Jesus was asleep during the storm. And I said this earlier, Christ has inner peace, which was reflected on the inside, on the outside. Something on the inside, working on the outside. And that's how we can be as Christians. Even when the situation is stormy, even when somebody come at you crazy, even when your boss is, is not kind to you and targeting you, we can have peace and we don't have to react like the people on the outside. Jesus is, is the Prince of Peace. So we had, he had, uh, the, the, he had, uh, no problem going to sleep in the midst of the storm. When you know everything is all right, you can be relaxed. Uh, many times we worry too much. Uh, we, we can't get enough peace. Our lives, in our lives, we worry, we complain, we're not happy, but we have to allow the Prince of Peace 
to come on the inside and take back control of our life. And so uh, my first point, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Secondly, Jesus was asleep during the storm. Thirdly, natural storms will come in our lives. That's, the, that's human nature. That's human nature. Storms are going to come. We should not be surprised when, when maybe sickness comes or, or, or when we don't have enough money to, to, to pay a bill or these kinds of things. They're going to come. Um, you're going to be disappointed sometimes. But saints shouldn't become unglued every single time they have an issue because we have the Prince of Peace in our life. And, and, and many times we can draw closer to the Lord in prayer, draw closer to the Lord in, in, in that word. And he'll come, he'll bless us and we can be in the midst of the storm, just like the disciples was. And we're not worried about it because we know who holds our hand. We know who, who's in charge of everything like that natural storm in our lesson today. We will all experience sudden and intense spiritual storms in our lives, storms that are a great tempest in our lives. There's such a proliferation of sermons today that talk about blessings material gain, relationships, getting a million dollars, and, and um, going through life without thinking about suffering. But we're going to go through. Job, Job said, though they slay me, yet will I trust in him. We have to remember to lean on Jesus. Um, life is not going to always be perfect. Becoming a Christian, everything um, ain't going to be perfect. We should know that by now. But we know that the Lord is going to be with us in the storm. And he will see us on the other side of through. There's a blessing sometime in the storm. Sometimes the blessing comes while we're in the midst of it. So we, we can't always expect to get through the storm for the blessing. There's a blessing in the storm. He's teaching us something. He's trying to show us who he really is. Many times we can't really find out who Jesus is and his nature unless we're in the storm and he can work it out. How are we going to know that he's a, he's a, he's a way maker if we've never been in the way? If we've never been in the storm, how we know how we know he's a mind regulator if we never had the Lord to regulate our mind? How will we know that he's a doctor in a sick room, a lawyer in a courtroom? Hallelujah. Unless we're going through something. So sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through something. And that's to my next point. Hallelujah. My, my next point, we do not handle storms well sometimes. Fourthly, we do not handle storms. And because we overlook them, we do not handle them well. Some time ago, I had some uh, storm damage on my roof at home. Uh, it's an older roof, and uh, at some point I knew I was going to have to have to fix it. I was putting it off. But you know what? I did not prepare for it and acted all surprised when the damage caused, uh, when damage caused a, a water leak in my house. Every time it rained, it was leaking, and I said, oh my goodness, I got to take care of this thing. I finally and reluctantly spent the money, which we, you know you never have, <laughs> And we got it fixed the right way. And we was glad we finally did. But what I should have done is, is, is prepared in advance. And that's how sometimes you have to be as a Christian. You have to prepare them. You know, you know the enemy going to come your way. You got to be prayed up. You got to be in the word. You can't be all surprised. and can't, Don't let the devil catch you, catch you off guard. You see, when, uh, when owning a home, one should expect at some point to do some major work and repairs, even roof work. This is a part of being a homeowner. It don't make no sense to act all surprised when we have to invest and make repairs that are often natural wear and tear of having a home. This is often how we overact, overreact and complain each and every time we go through stuff in, in our life. Make no mistakes. Storms will always be a part of our life on this earth. Like you, I have had a number of storms in my life. I went through some small ones. I went through some big ones. But the Lord is going to be with us. I promise you that. I promise you that uh, he's going to be with us. When, when my, uh, my, my wife had our, our last uh, baby, um, my little girl, Madison, we, she had a, 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 pregnant, a complicated pregnancy. Uh, um, I can't think of the term right now, but it's the pregnancy, with high risk. It's high risk pregnancy. And it was, we went through a lot, but there was a blessing in that storm. Madison is an amazing little girl, but she wouldn't have, it was, it was hard to see that when she was going through. It was hard to see that when she had to be hospitalized. It's hard to see that when she was in uh, NICU. And uh, that's when they, they you know, the, 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 the keep the babies for a little while to make sure they're all right. It was hard to see that. But oh, it was a blessing at the end of that storm. And the Lord bless us. That's a natural example of how God do if we just hold on. It's not that we're going to suffer always, but the Lord is often doing something. And fifthly, 
And as I begin to close, spiritual storms come from different sources. Some storms can be self-inflicted. Some storms we can bring on ourselves. This can be because of bad choices we made in life. The Lord wants us to live holy and be like him. But if we get into sin, we bring uh, storms on ourselves. We could be simply reaping what we've sown. For example, we spend all of our rent money and bill money. It don't even have to be nothing, nothing sinful. Spend all your money on takeout food. You're going to reap that. <laughs> or you, you, or you, or you down there, uh, uh, gambling your rent money away. Bingo. 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 Being asked to unmute yourself. To unmute. You're being asked to unmute. Six. Okay. Can you hear me You're now? You're being asked to unmute yourself. Help. Six. You're being asked to unmute yourself. To unmute, press star six. You're unmuted. All right, I'm back. I don't know what happened. Praise the Lord. Say amen if you can hear me. All right, praise the Lord. Sorry about that. I had technical difficulties, but the the um when we're going through a storm, some sometimes it can be self inflicted, or we're in an ungodly relationship and we get get into trouble and go down that sinful path. We reap that. We reap what we sow. Some people reap what they sow: drinking problem, drug problem, bringing storms upon us on on themselves. They're not living holy, not living right. Some of our health problems are storms we brought on ourselves. These are self inflicted storms. But they, uh, uh, God can see us through if we lean on him. Some storms come from Satan. Many of the storms are an attack of the devil. We have be, to be spiritually discerning and be aware of this. Often Satan will attack our family or attack us through our family. Sickness can come through an attack of Satan. Trouble on the job can come through attacks of Satan. Uh, I've been in financial trouble because of fraud. <laughs> Satan has, he will attack your your finances, there's all kind of fraudulent schemes out there. So sometimes the storm can come from the enemy. We have to pray and rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. We have to be discerning, spiritually discerning. You have to have the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside because you have to be able to discern whether, okay, is this something I brought on myself or is this something the enemy is attacking me on? But we got to be prayed up in order to know that. And we got to be worried up in order to know that. We got to know what the Bible says as well. And thoroughly, some storms come from the Lord. Lord can be either chastening us or strengthening us. The Bible says that whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. The Lord sometimes can prevent us from big trouble down the road. Sometimes we can't see the perspective that God can see. He can be removing a person out of your life that you thought was, was, was everything. But the Lord will be trying to push that person out of your life because that person means you no good. And the Lord can see later on down the, the road that that person is going to mess your life up. They're going to have you all in debt and mess up your credit. Amen. And mess up your house, mess up your, your, your situation and have your money all messed up. And the Lord can see that. But sometimes we holding on to that person that ain't no good for us. We got to be able to willing to face that and say, you know what, I'm a, I got to cut, se separate myself from this person, separate my, myself from, from this man, this woman, and, and let God do it. And the Lord may be allowing things to happen to prevent us from making a terrible mistake. And I remember when I was uh, younger, I was out in the streets and, and you know, being bad and, and being rebellious, and the Lord would allow me to get pulled over by the police, and I knew it was the Lord. <laughs> And uh, sometime I get into a fender bender, and I knew it was the Lord. He was trying to get my attention. He didn't want me to be out there and get killed. See, I have a lot of friends that are no longer with us. They got killed in the streets, and the Lord could see that spirit of death later, way down the road. And He was trying to prevent me from going down that road. So I thank God for it. Sometimes it don't feel good when the Lord whooping us. Chasing if chastening also mean whooping. The Lord will, will, will give us a whooping so that we can, he can prevent us from going further into something we ain't got no business. So some storms come from the Lord. There were times in my life where I was about to make a terrible mistake, but God blocked it by allowing the storm. Or he may just be in the process of taking us through something so that when we come out, we can be as pure gold. And I watched this show called uh, Gold Rush, and they, they out in the mountains in Alaska, 
digging deep, finding gold. But when you sometimes when you find gold, it doesn't look like gold. It's got black stuff on it, and it's got other material and rocks on it. And they have to put it under fire to melt melt away the impurities. And once the impurities are gone, hallelujah, you can you can see that pure gold and it gleams. And that's how we are. Sometimes the Lord wants us to go through suffering so he can purify us and he can strengthen us and we can be more like Jesus. He's often seasoning us in the storm. Jesus will, and as I close, Jesus will be with us even in the storm. Like in the story, the most important thing that Jesus was doing, he was on board with them. Most importantly, he was there. Even though he was asleep, that don't matter. Jesus was there. And you see, he woke right up and he rebuked that storm. Jesus is present in your storm even right now. Sometimes he, it don't seem like it, but he's allowing us to go through it. He can speak peace over your storm, whether it's self-inflicted, whether it's of the devil or whether it's of God. If we line up with what he's trying to say, and he's line, line up what he wants us to do, the Lord can speak peace over that thing and, and the blessing in the storm. There's an old song that says, there's peace in the midst of the storm. When the world that I've been living in collapses at my feet, when my life is all tattered and torn, though I'm windswept, I've been battered, I'm, I'm going to cling to his cross. I'll find peace in the midst of the storm. I'll find peace in the midst of the storm. There's an anchor, there's a rock to build my faith upon. Jesus Christ is my vessel, so I fear no alarm. He gives me peace in the midst of the storm. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Hallelujah. Some uh, storms. 
Yes. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah, promised that he was faithful. Hallelujah. And just to help us to deliver us, to ride the storm with us. Mm. Hallelujah. And we thank God for Jesus on tonight. Thank God again for the man of God. Hallelujah. Declaring unto us the word of God. And I don't know about you. Hallelujah. But there comes a time. Over to God in our lives, and we realize that we have to depend on God. Yes, we yes. depend on God. We've got to depend on God. Hallelujah. Because He is the meteorologist for the storms of life. Hallelujah. He knows. He knows. He knows all about it. Hallelujah. And He will guide until the day is done. Hallelujah. Through all of the storms, ups and downs, ins and outs, he will guide until the day is coming. We thank God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For the confirmation and the consolation yes. in the word of God tonight that he is the captain of our seas. Mm. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. And he will help us as we ride through the storm. Hallelujah. We Amen. thank God so much. Hallelujah for the word of God on tonight. Thank God for the man of God. Hallelujah. Declaring unto us again the word of God. Reminding us, glory to God. Hallelujah. That the God of all peace is with us. Uh, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Glory to God. Certainly, certainly, certainly. Thank God for you, you, and especially you who joined us in the church without walls on tonight. <laughs> Thank God for all of you, the Lord's people. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. We thank God for our expediter tonight. We thank God for the prayer. We thank God for the word of God. Hallelujah. The scripture reading. And we thank God for the preach word of God on tonight. Glory to God. And we declare and decree. Hallelujah. Stillness to the storm in your life. Hallelujah. Here on this line, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We speak peace. We speak peace right now in the name of Jesus. Peace in your mind. Peace in your heart. Peace in your spirit. Peace in your soul. In the name of Jesus. Peace. Peace all around. Peace. Hallelujah. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. That soul on this line that's having trouble sleeping at night. We speak peace to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, and we give your name glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. You that may have received a, a report from the doctor that you're unsure about. We speak peace right now in the name of Jesus. Ah, God, and we thank you so much. We thank you. 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 We give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you honor. We give you praise on tonight in the name of Jesus. Listen, at any time, you're led so into the work of ministry. So into the work of ministry, our tithing, our offering to see that we can make this ministry possible. Oh uh, my God, you can give via Cash App, that is dollar sign, Cash Tag P-P-I-M-I-N-1. That's Cash Tag P-P-I-M-I-N-1. Zell, your contribution to P-P-I Ministries 1 at gmail.com. You cannot be God's giving no matter how you try. Well, maybe, uh, Pastor Boston, you might say, Pastor Boston, come on to give, but I don't have have any of those uh, uh, those uh, ways to give? You can give via mail. Mail your contribution to PO Box four seven zero nine nine four, Miami, Florida three three two four seven. Hallelujah to God. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good Amen. measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Hallelujah to God. In the name of Jesus. Listen, Sunday morning, Sunday morning is the first Sunday. All roads lead to 6895 North 14th Avenue in the city of Miami, Florida, where the windows of heaven are open mm -hmm. and the fire of God will be falling out like rain. Join us at the 9 o'clock hour. Tell Lottie, tell Dottie, tell everybody mm -hmm. that the doors of the church are open. Mm -hmm. Come on in. God has a blessing with your name written on it. You don't want to miss it. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't want to miss it. We are people of God in our summer Sundays. Our summer Sunday, starting this coming Sunday, you can dress down. Go to God. You can dress down. Be comfortable. Hallelujah. Sheep. Uh, comfortable but chic. 
in the house of God. We begin our summer Sunday on Sunday morning. So invite somebody, invite somebody, hallelujah, to come and be a part of our services. Let us remember to pick and shut in in our daily prayers. Hallelujah, the bereaved families everywhere. Let us keep them lifted up. This nation that we live in, the wickedness of this nation, let us pray for the blood covering over us. Let us pray for the blood to cover our families, our homes, our uh, marriages, our finances. Hallelujah. Every area of our life, our jobs. Let us pray. Busy while he's busy, while he's busy. We want the blood to cover. We want the blood, hallelujah, to cover in the name of Jesus. And we thank Amen. God for all things in Jesus' name. Again, you, you, and especially you, we honor you. We honor you in the name of the Lord. And we say for myself, Lady D, our family to your family, we love you with the love of the Lord. And if you go with God, God will go. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. Thank God for being with you. 
the saints have power, purpose, power, and power international ministries of all men enjoying my time with you all. Remember, God is navigating us through life's storm. There's peace in the midst of the storm. Praise the Lord. We thank God for, for uh, the service. And we will catch you next time. God bless you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord.